All right, it's tutorial 11 of my Gary's Mod tutorials. These are tutorials that are just kind of about the basics. If you know anything more than the basics, then I suggest maybe watch some later tutorials or whatever. Um, we're going to pick off right where we left off, and we were just messing with the material tool. Kind of showed you that. So let's go to the paint tool. Uh, the paint tool, say... Uh, I don't think that because that's loud. When you shoot something, these holes here, the technical term for them are decals. They're not actually putting a hole in the game. And if you know anything about games, you probably know that. It's just a texture. It makes it look like there's a hole there. There's not really. And this paint tool does that. It has all these different types of textures. So, is there a bullet one? I don't know. Anyway, there's all these different types of textures and whatnot. And that's what that does. It, like, paints them all. So there's a ton of different types. Um, and you can pretty much draw with it. So... Hi! Um, a little tip, if you see people doing this a lot and it gets annoying, you can press the tilde key. Um, if you remember from the, the other tutorial, I was talking about that key. It's this one here. It's going to be above tab and next to one. Press the tilde key. And this is how to get rid of them. And then you type... Um, actually, I don't remember what the command is. SV... Decal... Oh, no. Oh, no, I don't remember. GM... <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Maybe in post-processing, I'll put it up on the screen right now. Um, but I, I really don't remember what it is. Anyway, you type in that command, and these will all go away. I have it bound to a button. Well, I used to. But it's been so long since I actually typed it, I just don't remember. Anyway. Uh, so, that's the paint tool. The trail tool. It, uh, so you get a crop, like this beautiful washing machine here and you just put a trail on it. Look at that. It's a trail. Um, by now you should understand how settings work with these tools, so I probably won't go into them very much anymore. Um, but length, start size, end size, the thing, the color. Pretty simple. Um, Alright. And this section here, I'm not going to go into it. This is all... Um, an add-on called Pew Pew. I'm never going to probably make a tutorial on that. That's just a different thing. This, uh, I don't think you've ever worked with. And Falco's. Um, if you go into a server and they have Falco prop protection, this tool is actually how you would share things with other people. So, say you got a buddy on there, and if he tries to pick up your stuff like that, he won't be able to. He'll, his fizz gun just won't pick it up. Um, this, if you click... You can give them ability to do stuff to it. Um, they also won't be able to use a tool gun on it. They won't be able to damage it. They won't be able. You know, depending on the settings of the server, but that's how that works. So I figured I might as well just tell you about how that. Um, again, this is not part of vanilla Gary's mod. This is something servers have. Um, well, let's see. We just barely got into this number ten tutorial here. Was this ten or eleven? Oh, I don't remember now. Um. What can we go over? Let's go into some, something a little more advanced. Oh, I'll just show you this. It's kind of cool. Um, the 3D, 2D text screen. A lot of servers have it. Some don't. Um, it's just a text thing. So if you want to like put a sign above, maybe you're making some shop or something, um, you could do silver lightings shop. <laughs> that is extremely tiny. Let's change that. There you go. Silver lighting shop. And then you can creep. Uh, you can do up to five lines. So if you just leave them blank, it won't do anything. But then you can also change the color. Oh, let's put another one down here. Come get yo potatoes. Oops, if I can spell. That's not how you do potatoes. Yeah, I don't know if you can even read that, but. Uh, 
a cool little sign. It's nice. Um, you can reset all, and then reset everything, and it will reset everything, or reset just by specific things. Or reset per line. Pretty fun. Um, Antinova Field. This is something... Um, we should probably turn these off. If you're on a server, and say you don't want something, someone no clipping into your area. So say you have a base or something, say like this here, this little hut, this little thing is your base. And you don't want someone just to go into no clip and fly in, whoops. Oh, I'm not build. Uh, you don't want someone just to fly in like that. Then you can place an anti no clip field. Ugh. Uh, say like right here, if I leave out, you can see there's this red aurora, like this red box around that area. If you try to no clip into there, it'll remove your no clip. Of course, but for you, you can still no clip. So I can still no clip in here. But normally, if this was someone else's, I can turn that on and see how it, it took me out of no clip. So I won't be able to no clip through this anymore. Because the second I go into that field, it removes that ability. Um, you can change the size, change the shape of what it looks like. Um, you got a couple of options here. This, you won't be able to see. This is the admins only. Uh, admins of the game, as in, like, the people who run that map, or server, I should say. Um, but yeah, then you can hide all fields if you want, or you can just hide your own so you can't see it. Very useful. Um, they have another one called anti no clip Entity, but I don't have that one. And that applies to a prop. So if I try to fly through that prop, it'll use that options against me. So you can make me go out of no clip. It can kill me. You can do all kinds of different stuff. Um, let's see. Diamond fading doors. Ooh, fading doors. That's a good one. Okay, so if you ever go into an RP game, which I never do, I'm a sandbox guy. I only play sandbox. Um, but if you go into RP and they say something about fading doors, this is what they're talking about. It's this tool here. Um, what it does is say you have a prop let's get a big old prop here just easier to show um obviously you can't run through it it's a prop um the fading door is as what it sounds like if you set it to a button or something i'm just gonna set this to this because it'll make it easier and then click it oh why sound reversed Anyway, then you click it, and then when you hit that button, see how it fades out like that? If I spam the button. If you hold that button down, and you walk through it, you can go through it. That's why I said walking through it. <laughs> um, yeah. That's what a fading door does. Um, and now, I might as well teach you how the next um, tool that corresponds with this a lot. It's called a keypad. Or a button. Either one. Um, when you have something that corresponds with a button like this, like I'm pressing my mouse 3, you can use uh, th this right here um, to simulate that same button. So on the fading door, if I have my button set to mouse 3, and then I have a button set to the same, um, every time you press that button, it'll simulate you pressing the actual button on your thing. So I'm not going to press anything but E on this, but it acts like I'm pressing mouse 3 to use my fading door. See that? And if I press it again, it turns it back off. So um, that's really useful to make remote control things. So say like you had that hydraulic you had earlier, and you remember that door, that really, really simple, simple idea of a door that I did? Well, if you use this in conjunction with it, you could just press this button, door opens, go inside, press another button, and it'll close. Um, not quite that simple, but that's the idea. Um, and then there's also keypad. Keypad does the same thing, but it has a password to do it. So really simple. I'm just going to leave this how it is. Um, we're going to keep the password as 1234. Um, I don't even know what secure mode does. Oh, secure mode means like you can't see what the password is when you're typing it. Um, we're going to weld it and freeze it to it. Um, access granted. It's going to simulate what key to that when you do it. So this fading door that we have, remember, is mouse 3. 
So I have that set to that, and then I'm going to have the hold length a little bit higher. That just means how long to press this button down. Um, and everything else should be fine. Um, and then if I do one, two, three, and four, and then hit OK, bam! So it acts like a code in order to press that button, which is really good for, again, this is this is the uh, where I was getting about the dark RP or RP or whatever. Um, they want you to have fading door setups. So this would be a fading door setup. So if, say, this was on an entrance to a, a building or something, say, like, this um, alleyway, you could go up to this and press one, two, three, and four, then OK, and walk right in. And that's what they mean by um, make sure you use a fading door. Um, the other thing about this, the uh, keypad one, it also has an access denied one. So if you use, um, say, like the dynamite we had from one of the first tutorials I was doing, we have that set down, and we have it set down to obviously numpad, um, whatever. And go back to keypad, set that to numpad. Ah, uh, I'm an idiot. Anyway, you probably get the idea, but I just want to show you. Whoops, what am I doing? Dynamite, dynamite. Keep it. Keep it. Oh. This one doesn't override. Anyway, so if you have the the uh, access denied one set up, when they go and press the thing and they type in, say, the wrong password, so it's 1234, but if I do like 1235 and then hit it, the explosive went off. So, um, just remember that this is access granted button to simulate. So again, the mouse three, and then this is the uh, access denied. So my mouse or numpad explosive. So that's a pretty, uh, I would say advanced, but moderate thing that you can do. Um, and you know what? I am way over time. So <laughs> I guess I'll just end it there. Um, and we'll see you, um, in the next one.